Now, in your video, you basically just said, I don't care what your opinion on any other distro is, we're going to use Kubuntu because Kubuntu, you know, good choice. But what, like, the, what reason did you go with Kubuntu? Um, a couple reasons. One is that uh, Ubuntu is, like, very widely used, very stable, has good software support, and if a vendor supports Linux, it's probably Ubuntu. There are also the most help resources available for it online, mm -hmm. and so I think it's a pretty stable, uh, like, not too flashy, but dependable choice. And then uh, the Kubuntu part uh, is because KDE Plasma, uh, which is what I'm using right now as well, uh, is just a more familiar experience for Windows users than, I don't know, GNOME or Hyperland or Neary or anything stranger than that. Um, and so I, there are, of course, other choices. Oh yeah, the, uh, the other major consideration that I had was secure boot support because hmm. Ubuntu has uh, a Microsoft signed shim bootloader for secure boot. And so you don't need to disable that uh, and making people having to uh, have to go into their BIOS uh, or UEFI settings and disable secure boot uh, in order to run this kind of defeats the purpose of having non-technical software, right? And so right. that kind of limits you to Ubuntu, Fedora, or maybe OpenSUSE uh, based distros. And of those all, I thought that Kubuntu was the best choice. Mm -hmm. It's not perfect for sure. It, like it would be nice to have something with uh, Plasma 6, uh, which won't be available in an LTS release until like April next year. Mm. Um, maybe maybe something Atomic would be nice just to stop people from breaking their distros. Like there are a lot of different options. And like, I, I do kind of feel bad about telling people like, I don't care what you think about my distro choice. You can do it on your own time. I mean, like, I'm not saying I don't feel that way, but it is also valid to bring up uh, gripes that you might have with my choice of distro. And so in the background, I've actually worked on some improvements to make it easier to port this to other distros. And hopefully that can be continued in the future uh, by myself and other contributors, making it sort of a completely distro agnostic system where you have like a, a back end that's specific to all the things for that distro. Um, but then uh, like the core application code is all the same. And so then like you could have people migrating to I don't know Fedora Silver Blue if they felt like it. That would be cool. It's also a lot of extra it would work. Be cool. It it is a lot of extra work, yeah. And so it's not something I think I'm going to work on because I mean, like I said, this the grass is greener on the other side, sort of thing. Like as soon as we got there, there would be things like, oh, you know, I this distro is bad because X Y Z. We should go back to Kubuntu, the pinnacle of all distros. Uh, and so. I don't, uh, I don't think it's worth getting caught up in all the flame wars and that sort of thing. Like, just pick one that's functional and dependable and make that the main, the main option, but allow other people to implement support for it if they really feel like it. Because when the, when the feedback to do that is that overwhelming, then, like, of course, uh, I, I will listen to it. I'm not deaf, so even if it's not something I'm the most interested in, it uh, can't be... Uh, really claim to be a good maintainer if I just ignore what everyone wants and do my own thing. So, I think the main concern with making it distro agnostic is each distro is going to have a different install process and it may not necessarily be as well documented as what Ubuntu has. They may not necessarily have a well-defined automated installer. So you end up putting yourself in a situation where basically you're just tracking down or making installers for these different distros to really make, I would say, make the tool more complex in a way where most people who'd be using it probably aren't really concerned with the results you get, right? Like, if you're, yeah. a, if you're someone who's using a tool like this, you're not the kind of person who's going to be debating, oh, do I want to use Kubuntu or Fedora KDE or something else? You're the kind of person who doesn't really know much about distro choices and you're using this tool to migrate. Exactly, yeah. And that you, you've really uh, just kind of understood what I've been getting at with this whole thing. Uh, and so it's just like, you know, people have suggested to make a, a drop down to pick your distro when you're starting and like people don't, 
really know or care what that means and if they do then they're not the target audience and right. so i think uh like i've i've tried to keep that in mind uh and i think most people are aware of that uh and there are yeah i i, I can keep saying the same things forever but yeah uh other distros a possibility kubuntu still the main one yeah i think there's a lot of how do how do i say it when you're someone who is very involved in a space, it can be very easy to forget what it's like for the average person who's just now getting involved in it, right? If you're just starting, I don't know, a new sport, if you're just starting to use Linux, there's going to be a lot of things that you don't know that you don't know, where someone who is more advanced in that space, it's sort of like innate knowledge to them, where they don't even think about the fact that people who are getting involved in this aren't going to know what a distro is or aren't going to know what Wayland and X11 are or aren't going to know what different desktop environments are. It can be very easy yeah. to overwhelm someone with that information. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it makes me uh, think of that XKCD with the geologists saying like, oh, you know, the average person only knows a couple of silicates and maybe like a an alloy or something like that. That's not that's not the meme text, but uh, it's just about how experts overestimate the familiarity of the average person in their field. And I think that does happen a lot with Linux and kind of the Linux bubble. Just like, oh, have you found it? I think I found it. Okay, uh, yeah. It's, uh... Average familiarity, 2501. Uh, Silicate chemistry is second nature to us ge uh, geochemists. So it's... Uh, so it, uh, but the, so it's easy to forget that the average person probably only knows the formulas for olivine and one or two feldspars. And quartz, of course. Of course. Even when they're trying to compensate for it, experts in anything wildly overestimate the average person's familiarity with their field. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So uh, I, think, I think people in the uh, sort of Linux bubble, uh, like I called it before, like just are like lovely humans, but uh, do not necessarily take the time to look out into the world and see mm -hmm. uh, see where everyone else is at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think if you surround yourself with nothing but experts in a field, you very quickly forget what the average person is like. And I've had this mm -hmm. discussion with so many people before, not just about distro choices, but any any little thing on Linux. like. You, if, if you want someone to actually migrate to this system, you have to meet them where they're at. Or at least mm -hmm. where they're willing to get to. Because a lot of people, again, they, they don't really know... Someone might be willing to learn about a system, but if you know nothing about it, you don't even know what you don't know. So you don't even know what there is to learn. And I think having resources in place where people who aren't necessarily super technically technically literate, like they have a deep knowledge of the system. I think having resources there where people can easily move over, at least to me, is a net good thing. I know some people yes. I know some people don't like the idea of you always have people who are concerned with something becoming too mainstream. And there are certainly concerns there with Linux where you have people who don't understand what open source is, who don't understand licenses, who don't understand that just because you can get the software for free doesn't mean that these people don't also want to make money from the projects as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I've, I've got a lot of thoughts on... I've got a lot of thoughts on this space. Yeah, I I have I've given quite a bit of thought about that uh as well just sort of the dynamics of open source and Linux and how like I don't know sort of culture wars between old and new users sort of thing and so maybe maybe Linux isn't perfect maybe the community isn't perfect but uh I still I still love it and it's the it's the free OS we have even if it's not the ideal one out there and so I think uh like whatever we can do to smooth out those issues and help get people using Linux, uh, like not just slapping them on there and saying have fun, but like actually setting them up for success. Uh, I'd rather have people using Windows than like a completely broken Linux install. Um, so yeah, I think just exactly like you were saying, uh, meeting people where they're at.